Are you looking at ways to systemize, streamline, and remove yourself from complex processes through automation? Well, whether it's automating appointment scheduling, training, onboarding, or recruitment workflows, you can do this with JotForm's free no-code workflow builder, and I'm gonna show you how. My focus in this JotForm workflows tutorial is to share how you can streamline your processes and systems, save time and money, and automate internal tasks with JotForm workflows in minutes. Okay, so with that covered, let's jump over to my computer and launch into JotForm. Here we are at the JotForm website. Now to get started with JotForm for free, simply head over to your browser and type in jotform.com or feel free to click on the link in the description below this video and that's gonna take you here. Then navigate down and sign up with Google, Microsoft or with your email. And within a few clicks, you'll arrive inside your JotForm account. I've already created a free JotForm account so I'll meet you inside. And after signing up, you'll be taken directly inside your JotForm account where you can create your first form. Now, before we dive into JotForm workflows, what exactly is JotForm? In essence, JotForm is a powerful no-code form building platform with over 25 million users and designed for all types and sizes of businesses looking to streamline and automate any process. This is through dynamic forms and workflows. JotForm, in my opinion, offers one of, if not the easiest visual drag and drop form builder and workflow building experience. Now, just quickly, I wanna say a big thank you to JotForm for partnering with us on this channel and sponsoring this video. JotForm is a market leader when it comes to building simple no-code forms and workflows. Again, a big thank you to JotForm for sponsoring this video and supporting us in creating high quality educational content for our audience to consume for free. Now, before we launch into JotForm workflows, you can see down here we can create a form from scratch or we can use one of these pre-made templates. For example, let's navigate down here and quickly take a look at the visual form builder. Here you can see this form template that we selected. If we navigate over to add element, we can simply drag and drop any of these fields into this form. Let's navigate down to basic elements and drag this paragraph element and place that in our form. With each of these elements, you can simply click on edit and we can edit the field or element options. Again, let's navigate down and click on properties and we can add our own configurations. Let's close out of this and close out of form elements and navigate back up to the top and then navigate over to our dashboard by clicking on JotForm. And as you can see, we have one form over here. Navigate over to my forms and then click on my workflows. And this is where we can create our first workflow. Again, just quickly before I show you how to create your own JotForm workflows, what exactly are JotForm workflows? Well, formerly known as the JotForm approval process, this feature has evolved into a full suite workflow builder for streamlining all your unique digital processes. Anyone can now simply build out no-code workflows in minutes with JotForm's intuitive and visual drag and drop builder. Think about any current process that you have in your business. Most likely you can optimize and systemize that process and significantly save time, energy, and money. Okay, so now that we're familiar with what JotForm workflows are, let's dive into the templates and see what processes we can streamline with JotForm workflows. Simply navigate over to Create Workflow and let's take a look at templates. Here we can filter through the different categories on the left hand side and preview the different workflow templates. Again, think about the different systems that you want to streamline in your business. Is it client onboarding, your lead qualification process, construction workflow, ticket process. If we come down, inventory management or social media workflow. Take the time to navigate through all these different workflow templates. Let's navigate back up to the top and take a quick look at this employee onboarding workflow template. Click here. Here we can preview the workflow and zoom into the different process stages. If we navigate up to the top, you can see the starting point is this form here. Let's preview the form. And this is the new employee onboarding form that we can preview. Again, we have complete control over the form customizations as well as the workflow. Let's go ahead and click on use template. Hey guys, just quickly, did you know that over 90% of you that enjoy our free educational content have not yet subscribed? It would mean a lot to me if you drop a comment or hit subscribe if you love what I'm creating. This helps us grow the channel and motivates me to create bigger and more impactful tutorials for you to consume for free. Okay, so with that happy note, thank you in advance, and let's get back to the video. Let's have a look at some of the different elements that make up this workflow. Again, we have the starting point up here. This is the new employee onboarding form. To preview the form, simply click on view form and that will take you to this form element. Let's navigate back. If we want to make changes to the form, simply click on edit form. 
After this form has been submitted by a potential employee, we have this approval process. Click on settings. And as you can see, this is a task element. The title of this task, verify documents and assign training schedules. Let's close out of this. Again, if we navigate over to elements, you can simply add that task element by simply dragging and dropping that element. Okay, let's remove this, click on delete and delete task. Here we have a Google Calendar integration, then a welcome email, then this approval element over here, a Google Drive integration for approvals. This conditional split also has a deny branch and then more elements down here before this workflow ends. Now, before a workflow template like this can be used, you want to make sure that all problems are resolved. For example, down here, we need to integrate our Google Calendar and Google Drive. To do that, simply navigate over to Complete Settings and then Settings up here, and then navigate through that process. Okay, let's close out of this and close out of this template. Navigate back over to Workflows, and let's go ahead and create a workflow from scratch. You also have the option to start your workflow with a single step approval. To speed up the workflow creation process, let's go ahead and select here. And here we are inside our fresh new workflow. Let's navigate over to Settings, come down and name this workflow. For me, I'm going to create a new customer project workflow. However, you can add any workflow title based on the type of workflow that you want to create. Then navigate back over to build. Now, as I mentioned on the left-hand side, we have access to workflow elements as well as workflow integrations. Here we can integrate our favorite third-party apps. And we'll talk more about this soon. Navigate back over to basic and let's start our workflow by adding a form. Click on complete settings. Here we can search for and choose a form we've already created or create a new one. And again, I'm going to use this new customer registration form and click on use template. Now in terms of form and workflow branding, I want to add my logo and business name in here. Let's quickly do that. Then once you've added your logo and business name, come down and click on don't show this again and then save. Then simply customize your form. I'm going to change this new website and branding project form. For the subtitle, add your website and branding details to begin your journey with us. For this particular new project workflow, I wanna create a seamless process for capturing payments, onboarding clients, and starting projects. And this is for my web design and media agency called Cindio Media. Then simply navigate down to your form and start customizing this form. You can do that by clicking on the different elements like I showed you earlier, and you can also add elements from the left-hand side. Now, because your form and process workflow is going to be different to mine, I'm going to quickly navigate through the process of customizing this form. So take your time to build out your form and then we'll continue building our workflow. Okay, so I've quickly gone ahead and created my new website and branding project form. You can see I have customer details down here and then project details. Let's navigate back up to the top and we can preview this form if we like, and I'm happy with this form. Let's navigate back over to our workflow by navigating down to workflow builder. Then navigate down to approval and click on settings. Here we currently have two outcomes, approve and deny. And you can see the approvers down here. I'm also going to add another team member and then navigate down to completion rule. And this project approval process only requires a response from one person, either Stuart or Emma. Again, we can customize these outcomes if we like. I'm going to delete this. And we can also customize the email notification if we like. This is the notification that the approvers will see. I'm happy with these details, let's close this. And now if a new project has been submitted by a potential new customer, then myself or Emma needs to approve that form response. Essentially approve the project details. If we approve the project details, then this email will be sent. What we wanna do is navigate down to add recipients and navigate up to form fields and click on email. So the email that's added inside this form under customer details will receive this approval email. I'm happy with that. Here we can change the sender name. I'm just going to add my business name for now, then navigate over to email. And then down here, we can modify the email subject as well as the email body. I'm going to make a small change here as well as down in the email body. Your project request has been approved, yay, you will receive a quote shortly. I'm happy with this, let's navigate down and click on save. Then on the right hand side, if the project details are denied, then this email will be sent to the contact that submitted this form. To do that, we need to add the recipient, again by navigating up to form fields and clicking email. Again, this is the email that is captured from this form. Now, if you want to add additional form fields, you will need to upgrade to a paid plan. However, for now, we're just using the free plan. If you like, you can test email. We're gonna go ahead and click on save. Now let's continue building our workflow. I'm going to navigate up to add element and add this task element. I'm going to move this over here and let's move this element end down here 
and redirect this workflow by clicking here and clicking delete, then delete this link and drag a link from this email to this task element. The great thing about job form workflows is you can play around with the different placements based on what visually works for you. Let's click on task settings and add a task for my team. Send a quote, then add a task description. Please send an accurate quote based on the project details added by the potential client. Let's navigate down to outcomes. I'm going to add another outcome and I'm going to add in progress and change complete to quote sent. I'm going to assign this task to Emma. I can assign this task to a team member, but for the purpose of today's tutorial, I'm going to assign the task to myself. Then we can navigate down to customize. And again, similar to the form builder, we can customize this response form. At the moment, the task assignee can simply navigate down here and choose the response and then click on submit. If we like, we can add additional fields to this form. I'm going to keep this simple. So let's navigate back to our workflow. Then let's navigate down to add element and add approve and sign. Then connect the send quote. Select the outcome up here, quote sent, and let's customize this approval and sign. I'm happy with approve and deny. We require a signature for approve and the signers are, I'm going to remove myself and add from form fields and click on the email, which will be the potential customer's email that they added to this form like I mentioned earlier. Let's click out of that. Then navigate down to completion rule, requires response from one person. Again, I can navigate down and edit the email if I like, and then we can require login for signer if we like. I'm happy with this, let's close, and let's quickly break down the current workflow. Once a new form response has been submitted, then myself or Emma will need to approve the project details. If the project is denied and we do not want to take on that project, then this denial email will be sent to that contact. And that's the end of that workflow based on those responses. On the other hand, if we approve the project, then this approval email will be sent to the potential customer. This then activates a task, which I'm assigned to and requires me to send a quote. Once the quote has been sent, then the potential customer needs to sign and approve. And you can customize this element further. You could add details about the contract. Next, with this workflow, we want to capture a payment. Navigate down to payment form and add that to your workflow. And let's link the element approve and sign to payment form. Select the outcome, approve, and now we need to configure the payment form. So once the quote is sent and the potential customer has approved and signed off that quote, then we want to capture the payment from that customer. Here we can select a form. We currently do not have a payment form. Then add the assignee email address. Again, this is going to be the email of the customer. Then we have pre-fill. And this is a powerful way to reduce the time friction of filling out forms. This allows us to use pre-fill to get data from one form to another. And once we've selected a payment form, we can turn this on. Okay, so let's save this for now. And you can see we currently have one problem if we navigate up here. That's because we need to add a payment form. Let's quickly create a payment form by navigating up to Workflow Builder and then Form Builder, then click on Create Form. Let's create a form from a template, then navigate down to Payment Forms, and then locate a payment form that you want to use and customize. I like the look of this one down here, Payment Form. This is a simple payment form that I'm going to use for the purpose of today's tutorial. Then click on Use Template, then take your time to customize that payment form. As you can see, I've quickly gone ahead and customized this payment form. I've added my logo, I've added the title, Cindio Media Payment Form, as well as a brief description, as well as my products. Okay, so once you've taken the time to customize your form, simply navigate back over to your dashboard, then click on My Forms and click on My Workflows. Simply locate the workflow that you've been working on and select Edit. Then navigate down and click on the payment form settings. And here we need to select that form that we just created. Again, navigate over to prefill and let's go ahead and turn this on. Select a source and we want to select the first form that we created, which is at the top of our workflow, new website and branding project form. Here we have the autofill options. I'm happy with these, then click on save. And that's going to quickly allow our customers to make payments with autofill. Now, once the payment has been approved, I'm going to navigate up to integrations and navigate down and locate zoom and drag that and place this zoom element over here. Let's go ahead and zoom in, then connect the payment forms to zoom and then complete settings. And we can choose these different actions, create a meeting, add register to meeting or add to webinar. Let's create a meeting and click on next. Here we need to connect zoom. Then here we can customize the zoom meeting following the payment. I'm going to delete this and add your strategy session is booked. Now we're going to select from form field. Simply click here, then navigate down to the bottom and I'm going to locate the Cindio Media payments form. This was the payment form that we created. And then what I can do is locate this form element. Please schedule a call with us following payment. 
click here, and then I'm going to select the same option. The duration is, again, based on this form field and this option here, or you can select a custom option. Now, this is an appointment element that I added inside the payments form. So within the payment form, the customer will see the option to add when they want to book a strategy session with us. We can match the fields down here, Zoom first name, last name, and email. Let's go ahead and match the fields with our forms. First name, last name, and email. Here we have email down here, and then click on save. And just like that, our workflow is complete. Let's navigate down the page, and then drag a link from Zoom to end. And that's the end of our workflow. Again, you can drag these different elements to make your workflow look nicer if you like. For example, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna drag end and place that here. So this is our entire workflow that we just created. Once a new project has been submitted, our internal team will approve if we want to engage in that project. Once approved, the potential client will get an email, then an internal task will be added. A team member is responsible for sending a quote. Once the quote has been sent, then we have this approve and sign element. This is for the customer to approve the quote. Then automatically, once the customer approves and signs, this payment form will be sent to the customer. They will then make the payment and add their appointment details for a strategy Zoom session. And that's the end of this workflow. Now, if we navigate over to integrations, there's all these other integrations we can add. For example, if you use Asana or Airtable for project management, you can add that integration inside your workflow and add this as a new task or project inside your third-party project and work management app. Again, we have Airtable, Asana, ClickUp down here, and other options. If you use a CRM like HubSpot, Monday.com, or a communication tool like Slack, you can easily integrate these third-party tools inside your workflows. You can easily create simple or advanced workflows in minutes using this intuitive workflow builder and the different basic elements as well as integrations you can find on the left-hand side. Okay, let's go ahead and delete this, confirm, and now let's preview a response. I'm going to quickly fill out this form and test this workflow. I'm going to quickly fill out this form. Just like that, I submitted a form response. Let's head back to our workflow then navigate up to Workflow Builder and click on Tables, and you'll see that response under Tables. Here we can click on that response, and that's going to bring up a macro view of the response details. And you can see there is an action required. If I navigate down here, you can see we have this approval step. Please review this submission, and I can come down and click on Approve. Also, if I navigate up to Tables and then click on Inbox, Inside of Inbox, we can also preview responses and engage in the assigned action. I'm going to navigate down here and click on Approve. And remember, I was assigned to the task as part of this workflow. So now I need to view this task. Please send an accurate quote based on the project details added by the client. Once I've sent a quote to the client, I can navigate down here and submit. Let's click on View Your Completed Task. And if I navigate down here, I can see this task has been completed. And this is essentially an activity log for this particular response. Now I'm waiting for the approval and sign step, which is to approve the quote. And then that will take us to the next stage in our workflow. Okay, let's navigate back up to inbox and navigate back down to workflow builder. And there we have it. That is how you can simply build workflows to streamline your different processes inside your business. From my point of view, Jotform workflows is ideal for most small and medium businesses. It's free to get started with. And as your business grows, their premium plans are affordable. The visual drag and drop form and workflow builder is incredible and easy to use for anyone in your team. Like I showed you, no code is required and you can set up your workflow stages in just a few clicks. I do believe Jotform needs to add more integrations. Their third-party integrations are relatively limited and the options within those connections are limited. However, for the majority of workflows, this process is seamless and the integrations and basic elements are sufficient enough. And there we have it guys, that is it for this brief Jotform workflows tutorial. Now, if you have any questions about Jotform, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel. And that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.